welcome to That Computer Is Your Mom, a Gem in the Holograms podcast. This is Allie. And this is Josh. Okay, so today we are doing Gem episode, uh, it was uh, season one, episode two. What was it called? Do you remember? I do not remember. Okay. Hang on, I can check real quick. Was it Disaster? It was Disaster. It was Disaster, well remembered. Um, okay, so... (laughs) Which disaster that refers to is not clear. That's true. (laughs) So, um, alright, well, is there anything... Oh, I have a, uh, a correction to make. Oh, yeah. Which is that the, uh, the girl in the last episode that we were afraid her name was Bon Me, which is a sandwich, I think her name... Upon Wikipedia reflection, is actually ba ni, instead of ban me. So that's good. It is good. I feel like you can see how we would make that mistake. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jim and the holograms did not shit the bed in the way that I was afraid that they had. <laughs> so I'm like, please to report that that is not the case. That was that was good. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Um, anything that you, uh, upon further reflection, had to say about the setup of Jem? Oh, yeah, I wanted to say about the first episode that, um, upon further reflection, I didn't even think that Eric Raymond's scheme really had anything wrong with it, because, if you will remember... His whole scheme was that he was going to have a battle of the bands, and then he was just going to get lousy bands, and then the misfits, and the misfits would be good in contrast to the other bands. But it was his battle of the bands that he was sponsoring, so that just seems like a weird choice in your marketing approach, and not like... Like a moral decision, like an immoral decision. But, but, like, I think that this this show is, like, upholding the the concept of the Battle of the Bands as, as a, like, thing on par with, like, I don't know, a Supreme Court session or something. They're just, like, there's an integrity of the thing. Yeah. And they feel like he, her, <laughs> it's like a horrific ethical violation. Yeah, I don't think that that really is an accurate representation of Battle of the Bands. I mean, considering that institution. Eric Raymond hired this thug guy who in this episode we learned is named Zipper mm. to uh, menace the the orphans, like, that's a, that's a clear ethical violation. Yeah, that's worse. That's much worse than... Uh, sort of rigging a battle of the bands. And there's, like, even... But it seems like we're supposed to know from the fact that he decided to run this battle of the bands in this kind of weird and stupid way that that he's a, the sort of person who would send a thug to their house in the middle of the night and, like, start a fire. Sure, because, you know, if you do... If you... If you mess with the Battle of the Bands, where does it end? Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else? You also had a thought about the uh, utility of the Synergy mom bot. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it still hasn't said that it's her mom, but I guess we find that out later. I have a pretty clear memory that it's supposed to be, like, her mom or it comes from her mom dying or something i'm just like look let's let's address that when we get when when it comes up (laughs) all right well organically in the show we'll we'll table that for later yeah i'm sure we'll remember (laughs) sure um okay so let's see what happens what happens in this episode it picks up immediately where the last episode ends which is with the uh original starlight house on fire Mm mm-hmm And then what happens? Well, actually, as the episode opens, most of the people have already escaped from the burning house. 
Um, so there are a few people left inside, mm -hmm. right? And let's see. What's the name of the, like, angry bad seed orphan? Oh, the girl with the angry hair? Yeah. Her name is Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, she is still inside. Ashley, like, is interesting to me because she's dressed in a real tomboyish way. Yes. And she has this, like, real mullety kind of, like, ducktaily hair mm -hmm. that she... I don't know. She, she, all the other girls have the like very long straight hair. Yeah. She she definitely stands out. Look, I'm okay. I'm not saying anything about Ashley. I'm just saying that maybe Ashley's trying to get the girls to practice kissing. Where she's like, and then we'll be better <laughs> when it's time to kiss boys. <laughs> And the other girls are like, I don't know. And Ashley's like, no, it'll be good. Come on. And That's probably what happens. That is, that is maybe a thing that Ashley is, uh, is, uh, is, is perpetrating. Not perpetrating. It's not a bad thing. Who didn't do that? Everyone did that. Come on. Um, but yeah, so anyway. Um, she runs back inside. Mm-hmm. To get the oh, was she out to begin with? And she, she was runs out back to begin inside? to begin with, and she runs back inside. I didn't catch that. To get the precious otter jar, right? I think that like the thing that bothers me about this is not that there's like a tomboyish kind of like what looks like a maybe baby lesbian or bi girl to me. It's that she's the one that steals. Sure. And that's <laughs> the one that it's like that's where it's a problem. Yeah. Okay, so she runs back inside. Uh, Jerrica is not is not happy with her, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. You know, as an adult person, you would probably yell at a child who ran back into a burning building to get a jar full of fucking quarters. Yeah, there's some dollar bills in there. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, like this. There's not more than twenty bucks in this fucking jar. Like, yeah, which makes it really unfair that her penalty for stealing from it was to put thirty more in it. I well, the thing that the thing that I find like completely unfair about the honor jar is that she's an orphan child. Well, I mean, like this fucking thing. <laughs> she's an orphan child. Where is she supposed to get $30 from? Her dead parents? Like, she does not have access to money. Right. Being like, go... She looks like she's like, what, like 10 or 11? Mm -hmm. Maybe 12? Like, 12 year olds don't have money? Where's she supposed to get money from? And the other girls are like, you have to get this money. And like... Why, wh they should just be like, hey, we have a chore wheel. Mm. Ashley has to do an extra chore. Because, like, that's something she could conceivably do. Also, Jem never, like, considers, like, selling a little bit of her massive glam rock wardrobe. The, the glam rock wardrobe must not be violated. <laughs> or, like, downgrading to, like, not as expensive a car and just, like, driving that van around. Because there's also an old van. There was an old that van that they have. Yes, they could sell that that car. Well, why would you do that when you can go like whimper at a rich like, man? Or make an orphan like scrounge together whatever she can find. Like I don't know. Well, yeah, because... Picking coins up off the street. In the last episode, they were like, whatever the girls decide, like, you have to do. <laughs> Which is, like, a terrible way to, to like, deal with middle school girls. Mm. That is not, like, you do not want to be like, so here's a girl who looks different than all the other girls. Let's let the pack decide what happens to the girl who looks different. That's that's not how you run things. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That's gonna end up. That's gonna end poorly. So yeah. Um, okay. So, Jerrica yells at Ashley, the angry girl, mm -hmm. and like she For endangering herself. It is fair, but it seems like she was like genuinely like 
sorry about what she had done, which is why she yeah. tried to get the jar bag. Yeah. Um, but it so, just gets rubbed in her face. Yeah. Repeatedly. Well, God knows if you've done something wrong once. Yeah. You can never uh, live it down. That kind of seems to be one of the takeaways from this. <laughs> okay, so enough enough about the fucking honor chart. Right. <laughs> um, all right, so the house is burned down. Mm-hmm. The misfits... They apparently don't have insurance. They do not have... Because in- this is a real crisis. <laughs> yes, they don't have insurance. It, and it's like night when it burns down. And then Rio rolls up in the van... <laughs> It's like in the morning. Clearly daytime. <laughs> and Jessica's got like the blanket and she's kind of like whimpering and he's like, I'm here, babe. And he's like, Good old Rio, ten hours late. <laughs> and just in time for the misfits to also be there for no reason. Um like there's no reason why they're actually there. No, I don't remember why they show up. They just do, I think. And they're in their van, and they roll up, and Pizzazz is like, her house burned down. Ha ha, fuck her. <laughs> like, essentially. Yeah. And then, um, then, what, then what happens? Um, let's see. Oh, they decide that they are going to go and find that eccentric movie producer who just sort of spur of the moment offered them this Battle of the Bands competition six months in the future. Six months. I don't remember. And and ask him for interim use of the mansion, which, again, he was, was just offering to whoever wins this competition between the two bands. That's how real estate works. A- apparently because he has a spare mansion. Because <laughs> when they show up, it's like he's living there. Is it is it that one? It's not like next door or something. It's just his mansion. I don't know. He comes out in his bathrobe. Yeah, he does. And he's sort of like the actual fuck is happening. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but before they get there, um, there is a kind of lengthy for a twenty-two minute show chase S- scene. Super dopey van chase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of chase by the same three buildings a number of times <laughs> over and over again, um, which is solved um, holo- hologrammatically. <laughs> I don't know. No, I love that. Okay. We're going we're gonna to say it. that's a word. Okay. It's solved via holograms. They get the, the car with a hologram to look like a giant bright white dumpster. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And then they drive by the white dumpster. <laughs> the misfits do. The misfits do, because they're the ones chasing. And then the misfits see Rio dopely driving somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> with the kids. Oh, with the kids. Oh, so the whole... So they, they fail in evading the misfits, basically. <laughs> the whole thing is kind of pointless. Right. Because the Bisfits are successfully able to track them, thanks to Dopey Rio. <laughs> he looks like he's driving by, and like it should be under under <laughs> under him. Like dope 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 dope. Do. Yeah, he looks really oblivious. He's like not looking to the right or left. And I the, mean, the Misfits van is pretty like obvious. It has like spikes on it, and it's yeah, bright. It's, it's kind of fitted out like. Is it, is it Ben Hur where there's a chariot with the spikes on the side, so to kill the wheels of the other charioteers? Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like. I was gonna say it looks like a panel van that is black. <laughs> yeah. That is sort of kitted out, like, in a, like, semi-Mad Maxian style with misfits, like, painted on the side with a lot of lightning bolts. Mm-hmm. The, the, the symbol of the misfits is lightning bolts. hmm And the symbol of Gem and the Holograms is stars. So. That's right. Okay. So, 
So then Do- everyone... Dopey Rio, like, gets them to, like, doesn't doesn't see the Ben-Hur van behind him. Apparently. Just doop 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 Drives right yeah. to the movie producer's house where he knows where it is because, you know. Everybody knows. It's on... <laughs> I guess this is taking place in Los Angeles? Uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, it seems like where else could it be taking place in the 80s if a movie producer just rolls up on your Battle of the Bands Mm -hmm. on his lunch break? That's true. Um, it's it's, It's not in Kansas. No. So, okay. So and there's palm trees. Oh, There's yeah. palm trees at the mansion. So it could be Florida, but it's not. It's it's LA. It's probably LA. Um Okay, so Jim they start a song. Like they start one of the small, like little music videos. Mm-hmm. And Jim's like, Oh my god, this is the one with the unicorns in it, remember? The unicorns that turn into Pegasuses. Yeah, because she's like, it, it's like a dream, or what? what is the, the lyrics of it? Like a dream, or... It just is like something about being like a dream. Something over about over being again. like a dream. And so she's with Rio, and they're like running around all over the place, and then and I'm like, okay, this is like whatever. And then, then they're like, oh, and we're on a flying carpet, and we're like... I guess. And then... Like a gem branded (laughs) sailboat or hot air balloon. Yes. And then they, then they like go and get on unicorns and ride a rainbow. And I think that's the point where I'm like, this is eight year old girl crack. (laughs) (laughs) Like what is happening right now is like, like hardcore like drugs to like an eight year old girl. (laughs) Just like, this is what I fucking want. This is what, what life should be. And then, Riding a unicorn up a rainbow. With a hunky, like, purple-haired dude who's a little dopey, but, like, you know. He's extremely dopey. <laughs> it's true. He's dopey, he but... He is the most oblivious <laughs> character. He's dopey, but he's supposed to be, like, hunky. He's definitely got broad shoulders. <laughs> well, like, and purple hair. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. So, I mean, all the men are, like, very, very beefy. Yeah. Um, they all, they all look like they really were made from the same, like, mold mm-hmm. that they make the, the like, terrifyingly muscled <laughs> Skeletor dolls Yeah, from. considering it's from Hasbro, they probably are. Yes. Okay, so, and at the end of the, like, like a dream song, it's, like, Jim's playing a concert at mm-hmm. this movie producer's house. So the the solution to the house burning down mm. is to go to this guy's house, go out in front of his house. Clearly before he's woken up <laughs> in the morning, really. Yes. And before he's put on clothes anyway. <laughs> and, like, loudly play this makeshift concert Mm -hmm. that the misfits like pull a total Philadelphia at where they just walk up and they're like, boo, boo, (laughs) which I think it comes out later that Roxy is actually from Philadelphia. Is she? Oh, that's fun. So maybe she just was like, let's just boo them because you know, that's like the Philadelphia. Hello. Yeah. She's like, Boo, you suck. <laughs> Welcome to Philly. Also, all of the orphans are just standing around. Oh, also still in their nightgowns. Well, because all of their clothes burned up. <laughs> well, that's true. But, um, Jim and and the, the rest of the her sisters, like, they go and they get, like, clothes from their, oh, from their secret, secret clothes stash. They don't offer them to the orphans, though. In their defense, I think they are adult size closed. But, yeah, so. Probably something. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the guy, the weird record producer guy comes out and he's like, 
the fuck is happening out here? Pretty much. And then what happens? Um. Oh, let's see. Things get weird. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, you know. It's gem. Let's see. Um. Pretty quick, a fight breaks out. Is there something in between? Jerrica is like, oh, please, can we stay in your mansion? Yeah. All of these girls are homeless now. Also, so am I. And the dude's like, yeah, whatevs. Right. So he says, yeah, you can stay there until someone wins the contest. Yes. And then Pizzazz pushes him into a pool. Yeah. Which seems like a really bad idea, especially because as far as I can tell, this is just something he's totally doing by himself. Like, he's decided he's going to give away this mansion. It, he's not representing anybody, I don't think, right? He doesn't say, like, I'm from this movie studio and, and on their behalf I'm making you this offer. It seems like it's just this guy. He's, he's just like, I like your pluck. Yeah, that's that's all it is, apparently. And so even though, like, one of the misfits pushes him into the lake and then starts driving a bulldozer around <laughs> on the property and, like, destroying the landscaping and threatening people's lives with it, because that's what happens next, he doesn't say, like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and call the contest in favor of not the misfits. <laughs> Because you people tried to kill me and other people. <laughs> He's it's, just like, no, we have to abide by the terms of the contest that, that I just like made up on the spur of the moment the other day. Once you, once you say, listen, Annabelle, if you don't know who Annabelle is, she's my niece and she's eight. She's the perfect age for this kind of thing. Mm. Once you say you're going to do a thing, mm -hmm. like, that's binding. Yeah. So it really is, like, made according to eight-year-old logic. Where <laughs> yes. if you said the thing... You said it out loud. Yeah. It's just, like, what would a paper contract even mean? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you said you were going to play a game. Yeah. And then you didn't. And that means you broke your promise. Right. Because you were mean. And you were the worst. Yeah. And this record, or this movie producer is not the worst. The Misfits no. are the worst. Well, Eric Raymond and is Eric worse Raymond than they are. The because they stomp off and then they go like wine scream. Pizzazz like stomps into his office and is like, they shouldn't be there because it's not fair and this contest and blah blah. And he's like, I'll fix it for you. Mm -hmm. So he calls his bro Zipper. <laughs> from the, Zipper from the last episode, a.k.a. how the first house got burned down. Mm -hmm. This seems to be what he does. <laughs> and he's like, don't screw it up. And Zipper says something that essentially, like, translates to waka waka waka. <laughs> Like, I don't remember what he says, but it's not smart. And, um, and I have, like, I, like, why, why does he keep calling this dude who is, like, an epic failure? I don't think he has anybody else. Uh, do you think he, like, he and Zipper are, like, pals from high school or, like... I think that Eric Raymond is not actually very good at finding, like criminals to carry out his his illegal <laughs> projects for him and so he just has to content himself with with the guy he can find who is not very good at it no he's really not good at it and we'll get to that in a minute he's very bad at it he apparently has access to explosive devices though very like Bugs Bunny looking. Yeah. Explosive devices. Mm -hmm. Like, it's real roadrunnery at yeah. that point. Is it, does something happen in between that we have to explain? If it does, I don't think it's important. Okay. So he I goes. Do, yeah. So Zipper goes to the mansion. 
and Eric um, Raymond's project for him, which is how he's going to take care of the situation for the misfits, is for Zipper to plant a bomb on the premises, <laughs> which he does. And this is really the highlight of the episode, for me at least. Because <laughs> Zipper <laughs> hides this Bugs Bunny like dynamite with a timer bomb in the cushions of a couch. <laughs> And he just picks up the cushion and puts it on top of the the explosive. <laughs> and it doesn't go inside of the couch. It just, like, sits on the couch and the cushion is then above it. So it would be... It is very clear that there is a bomb inside of the couch. <laughs> so anyone who walked by would see clearly there is a bomb. Like, you might as well just have put it on top of the cushion. <laughs> Rather than under the cushion. It is the, for all of the concealment that is achieved in this way. It is the size of two like large cats together. Yeah. And he like like sort of gingerly places a sofa cushion. He does it so carefully. It. That's what's funny about it. Is he clearly thinks he's concealing it. But you can see it from the side. Like he doesn't even push it in. It's, like, on the edge. You can see the timer, like, numbers, which yeah. I assume is the, like, storytelling utility of doing it that way. I think some of the things that the show does is, like, <laughs> it wants the audience to kind of winkingly know, you know, we know something that the characters don't, but they can't really count on the audience because it's so young really getting anything very subtle. So for the same reason, like, Jem is always kind of, like, winking at us. You know, I've got the secret identity. She does a lot of winking. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we do know. <laughs> this is, like, a, a major theme. You don't have to. But but, but she keeps doing it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then... E this either happens before or right after, but basically Rio comes to the gates and he's like hello I have all people from magazine mm -hmm. he's like magazine people are here mm -hmm. to make you a media star like that is the level of detail where he's like they are here yeah. with many clothes for you to try on mm -hmm. uh, and she's all and like there will be a photo shoot. and there will be a photo shoot shoot <laughs> shoot and and she's like we and um and that uh, Jerrica transforms into Gem. She's wearing a giant hat mm -hmm. that goes away when she has her hologram on. Is the hat not a hologram? Is anything she wears like real? Because I'm like, if you if you were like to go and stand next to Gem while Jerrica's wearing this enormous hat, would the hat like whack into you? Like, does the hat go away, or was it? I, I guess you're suggesting it was maybe not real in the first place. Um, it's hard. It's hard to know. I think it's not real. If you could, if you could project hologram clothes and or hair, would you? And what would you, like, what would you do with it? Like, would I? Yeah. I think that this power would be wasted on me. <laughs> Um, You're like, I, I wouldn't use it. I, I mean, I would probably use it. I might, I might use it to pretend that I had actually put on legitimate clothes when I hadn't. <laughs> that is a, that's a way that you could use it. You could like make your, your jeans or, or comfy pants look like, look like work pants. Mm-hmm. Which I, I believe we are already using that technology in our work sweatsuit pants that are a thing that you keep getting advertised. I don't think that's a real thing that people can wear, though. They're advertising it like it is. Well. You can try to make something a thing, but that doesn't mean that it's a thing. Somebody somewhere is trying to get away with that right now. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I would definitely do multiple hair. Uh, like, I would use the shit out of that. 
so much. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, would, I know you. <laughs> I would use it so much. I would be like, I'm gonna make my dress like change patterns, and mm. I'm gonna give myself like real badass looking shoes, but I'm gonna like wear like comfy shoes, mm. and I would, I would have like different. I'm like seriously like. Oh, I could like. And well, this is why you liked Gem so much. Probably, and like I could change my, I could have my eye color, like my eye, not my eye color, or you could do that too, but like my eyeshadow color, like change as I moved my head from side to side or up and down. I I usually like, turn my whole face into like a swirl. Now that we're talking about this, I remember remarking that right after the fire. Uh, Jerrica had had like had an occasion to put on her like extensive eyeshadow, mm -hmm. but maybe that was a hologram. Yeah, like how people get like tattoo makeup. Yeah, you could just always have perfect makeup. Yeah, and like you could like you could turn your like face into a blank swirl. Oh, why would you do that? <laughs> To fuck with people. <laughs> or you can give yourself a cat head. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I would give myself a cat head. You can do that with, um, with like video, video phones, right? Oh, with like Skype? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a Skype filter where you can just be a giant cat head. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. Only I would do it, like, if you looked at me in real life, I would just be, like, a giant cat head. And when I open my mouth, it would be like, meow. <laughs> and this is how I would use it, and only I would have it. Does the hologram also project sound? Yeah. Okay. I forgot. Yeah, it does. Okay. You could, like, make yourself, like, sound like a robot. You could, like, it does sound, too. The possibilities are endless. Does it really explain why that happens? No, it does not explain that at all. Um, That's fine. I'm going to, like, come up with more ways to use holograms, and I will tell them to you later. Okay. Um, yes. So. Do you want to go back to the photo shoot? Yeah. I think it's, like, really great that you're, like, I wouldn't change anything. That's cool. Maybe that's just a limited imagination. <laughs> no, I think it's because you're awesome. Okay. Um, okay, so the photo shoot, they have a uh, a song at the photo shoot. It's that Click Clash song that oh, you yeah. thought was pretty funny. Went on a little long. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not important, but there's a lot of pizzazz screaming, Clash! Oh, yeah. And they, like, chase them around in lightning bolts. It becomes a little confusing sometimes how much of the of the music interludes are, are actually taking place. Because elements of, of them seem to be actually happening, and others are clearly sort of fantasy that is not happening. I wish the part where they were riding lightning bolts was happening. Yeah, that that doesn't seem to have happened, though. But then the Misfits really do have guitar-shaped motorcycles I was, in that first scene. I was just going to say that. So, like, you just don't know. You never know. Um, okay, so... The Misfits are, like, there, but they're outside. Also, Ashley's like, so, since... Ashley, the angry girl... Thank you for specifying. ...is like, I saved the honor jar. Yeah. And the other girls are like, no, fuck you, you still owe us $30. Yeah, and there's she, like no forgiveness. Yeah. Or even sympathy at all from the other girls. They And they're like... They're kind of terrible. Yeah. And she's just like, bitch, where am I going to get $30? Yeah. Which is legitimate. So... The misfits are hanging around outside the fence, and Ashley's like, Hey, you want to get in? You gotta give me $30. Mm -hmm. And that's how she gets her $30. From the stupidest of the misfits. 
But also the nicest one. Yes. She's the one that like cries a little bit when they say that the yeah the, when they say that the girls don't have anywhere to live. She's just under a bad influence. Her name is Stormer. And she's named Stormer. That's a name that someone has. Like a real person? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Um, okay, so Ashley lets them in. Yeah. And so they're inside. There's this giant Bugs Bunny bomb. Mm-hmm. Like, it's <laughs> underneath a couch cushion. Mm-hmm. But they don't know that. No. Because Eric Raymond did not share his plan with them. He just said he would take care of it. Yes. And I guess they didn't trust that he would. Right. Because they decided to do this convincing one of the orphans to let them into the house thing. It's not clear what they were, like, planning on doing when they got in there. Well, they kind of crashed the photo shoot, don't they? Oh, that's true. Yeah, they're like, we're the misfits, and we, like, also deserve attention. There's a lot of them crashing events where it's not actually entirely clear why they shouldn't have been invited, really. Yeah. Um. Other than just rudeness. Well, I mean... I mean, they are kind of sociopaths. They are kind of sociopaths, but, like, underneath the, like... It, it's weird, because, like, there's sort of elements of, like, some weird class stuff going on, where it's, like, they're clearly, like, the trashy ones, and, like, Jem yeah. is, like, that bitch is rich, right? Yeah. Clearly. But then it comes out later that Pizzazz is rich, too. So, is she? Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. But uh -huh. Pizzazz is, like, totally rich. So I'm not really sure what to make of that. Um, well, it seems like it's just... Roxy is not. But they, like, act in a more stereotypically, like... Working class. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, you know, working class people, rich. like, shoving people into pools. <laughs> Well, and blowing up mansions. Yeah, if only. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not even like that. Um, okay, so so they're in there, and then what happens? Then uh, Eric Raymond somehow learns that they are there. I don't know. Is the is the photo shoot being like broadcasted live? Or does he hear it from, what's his name, Zipper? I, I don't know. Somehow he learns that they are at the mansion that's about to blow up, and so he gets, he, like, drives there and frantically yells at them to, like, get away, and then the bomb blows up. He says specifically get away because there's a bomb. Yeah, he says there's a bomb. He is not, this is why I think <laughs> Zipper is his only underworld contact, because he's bad at it. He's really bad at it. <laughs> he, somehow he manages not to get arrested, but... It's not clear how. Yeah. Because he is asked by a reporter, how, like, why he knew there was a bomb. Mm -hmm. But typical media incompetence, there's no follow-up. Yeah, because he makes up some clearly, like, horseshit story. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, well, I guess so. And you're like... Mm -hmm. No, and also, like, there's no, like, there's never any, like, police interference in any of these things where, no. like, there are clearly times in future episodes where, like, pizzazz almost kills somebody. <laughs> well, they almost kill somebody in this one, too. That's true. With the bulldozer. With the bulldozer, and also there's a bomb. And the bomb. And so, like, and that they burned their house down. There's a lot of them almost dying. Yeah, I mean... Not just, like, at the end of the episode in a cliffhanger, although that always seems to be the... or the, both times so far seems to be the case, but... Jim is... Well, there's a... It says in the theme song, Jim is Adventure, which I guess is almost getting murdered all the time. Yeah. Um, do you remember... I think we were talking about this when I first, like, proposed this idea... And and I had said, like, there comes a point where it becomes clear that, like, Jim and the Holograms and the Misfits are, like, the number one and two, like, groups in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's, like, literally what is being proposed here. <laughs> 
is that like it's like Beyonce and Rihanna mm -hmm. are like not only are they doing like all of their Beyonce and Rihanna things that they do mm -hmm. and all their publicity and their music and mm -hmm. everything else. They're also, like, constantly trying to murder each other with dune buggies. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like tearing down scaffolding and stuff. And they never get, like, arrested for it. <laughs> There's anything. never any consequences. And it's just, like... They never even have to talk to the police, it doesn't seem like. No. It, it's just, it's an amazing world. But, like, no one's ever, like, actually hurt. It's kind of like the A-Team in that way. Mm -hmm. Where there's, like, a lot of shooting, but, like, no yeah. one ever actually gets shot. In a way, it's not... It's actually even a little less weird than the shows that were marketed at Boys, right? Because mm -hmm. those were all fighting shows. Yeah. Everybody was shooting at each other or, like, hitting each other with swords. <laughs> and you're like, why is no one dying? It's true. Skeletor was always trying to, like, magic blast people, mm -hmm. and it was just, like, never, never went anywhere. Or a sword, like, shoots a beam out of it rather than being used as a sword. <laughs> it did seem like it was, like, more of a laser yeah. type thing. But then the laser doesn't even do anything. <laughs> it just, like, knocks you down. Well. You know, it's like a Nerf laser. <laughs> it's just, like... There's, there's like, an acceptable level of violence. No, like, no one really gets hurt. Um, yeah. So, where were we? Uh, it blows up. The, the bomb, bomb blows up. Off. And then Eric Raymond makes up some bullshit story. Mm -hmm. And people are like, uh, whatevs, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, criminal mastermind. Mm -hmm. And then that's, like, kind of the end of that part of the plot i mean the there's a big hole in the mansion but they're just like we're gonna clean it up and then the guy the guy the movie producer's like but if the misfits win i'll have to kick you out right after all of this right he reminds them of that again he does remind them of that yeah oh and then the lady comes up with the hair who's the countess the count do you remember what her name was it was something I think her first name was, was it Beverly? I wanted to say Danielle, but I don't. Oh, I think it might be Danielle. Is it Danielle? Um, She's a countess of some somewhere. Yes, and she. But this really seems like it represents a totally new plot in the episode. She's unconnected just like, to what has come before. There's a lot of people just like rolling up out of nowhere. Yeah. To be like, hello, it is me, person you've never seen before, or like. Why would that person know to be there? Well, they're just there. Like, there's a lot of, just like, well, there's a person. And again, this is a 22-minute episode mm -hmm. with several musical interludes that do not advance the plot. But just we're like, now, like, introducing a totally new plot that has nothing to do with what's come before. Right. There's, like, three, is there four? Three or four songs. There's definitely three. There's definitely three. That was the thing. Like, I've never seen another show, like a kid's show, and maybe they're doing them now, but, like, at least at the time, it was, it, to me, very innovative that they did all this, like, weird music mm -hmm. in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So, the Countess Danielle is like, oh, hello, come to my yacht. For a party. For a party. This evening. Mm-hmm. She says to Jim, she's like, oh, you're the group who does the new music. Yeah. And then she, like, really kind of rudely snubs the uh, misfits who try right. to finagle an invitation. Yes. And they are unsuccessful. No. And, um, then... I don't know if it's their reputation for trying to kill people. <laughs> And then, like, Pizzazz is, like... It still like, comes off as rude to me. It, it just... Even, even after they're involved in, uh, like, multiple plots to murder people, yeah. the lady is so rude yeah. that you're like, damn, they, that seems pretty out of, like, pretty out of line. And it, it seems like not inviting the misfits anywhere always just backfires on you, because they will show up, and then they'll try to... I don't know. 
ruin everything. Yeah, at least spray you with a seltzer bottle, maybe try to murder you. <laughs> While spraying you with a seltzer bottle. Right? Or God knows what, yeah. They seem like very powerful seltzer bottles. <laughs> They're like, I'm a powerful woman, I'm maybe gonna murder you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we go to cut to the yacht. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Uh, let's see. Jem and all of the band members are there. And they are introduced to a, um, like, a, someone who, who has a music video show. Mm-hmm. But then they don't have a music video. And so she introduces them to a video producer who is also at the party. Um, and it seems like they're trying to, like, hook up the one hologram with Shayna. Shayna with the video producer. This is, let me note, the first time Shayna gets a line. Yeah, she gets a couple lines. Yeah, it, she doesn't, she has, like, maybe one line in the first episode, and then she is, like, not spoken mm -hmm. until she's, like, until Jim's, like, Go make out with that dude. It really is kind of like that. She's like, hey. Okay, is it wrong that it's like Shayna is black and the producer is black and it's kind of like Jim's like... That seems to be why they're paired. <laughs> Jim's like, he's black, you're black, go make out with him. It, it, it does come off that way. And it's... <laughs> Although, like, he's, like, super nice, and she seems kind of into it. Yeah. Jim is, like, super fucking weird about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. That that happened. It makes you a little uncomfortable. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, although, like, I'm, like, glad that Shayna gets an opportunity to have lines. Yeah. And uh, yeah. she should. Because, like, any... <laughs> Although it's mostly about how she's sad that they don't have a music video yet. Yeah. But it, I really prefer, like, anyone to talk who isn't Kimber. <laughs> like, I don't really like Kimber. What do you have against her? She's annoying. Okay. I'm working off of future knowledge, oh, okay. so... Yeah, I guess we'll... Um, she has not had a lot of lines we'll yet. We'll get there when we get yeah, there. Yeah, she's not had a lot of lines yet, either. So, okay, and then Jem is being, like, super handsy with Rio. Right, which he doesn't like because he doesn't know her. Right. Or does he wink meaningfully to the audience? <laughs> and it's like, this is the other thing that always bothered me about this show. I think even as a little girl, we're just like, why are you fucking with that dude? Because, like, Jem is like... Yeah, she's really messing with him. She's all like, do you like me? I'm like... That bitch, that guy's already your boyfriend. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to, like, do him, mm -hmm. you could just do him. This is the point where I'm like, why, why does she have a secret identity? It doesn't make any sense. It literally is just to fuck with Rio. <laughs> there is really no explanation given for why she should need a secret identity. No. And you would think that, like... Is it... I don't know. Is it something to do with the contest between her and Eric Raymond? Like, if if he knew that she was the one who's... Th that she was the head of the band she was promoting, that would somehow be a problem? I don't... It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't... As far as I know... It's never explained, like, why this is necessary. Mm -hmm. It's just taken as, like, read that this is mm -hmm. how this is, this works. But, yeah, she, so, Jerrica is, like, really kind of, like, sweet with Rio, and she's like, oh, I love, you know, being around you, blah, blah. And Jem's like, hey, make out with me, do you like me? So maybe that's the identity in which she is able to uh, express her desire in a way that that her regular identity cannot, and that's why she's doing it. Maybe. 
it really does seem like it, it really is messing with him though because he does he does seem like genuinely upset by it yeah he really does she's kind of horrible because she, she's like real grabby yeah and he's like yo lady i don't like who what the fuck are you doing yeah um so then she goes in for like a kiss mm-hmm. and the misfits show up yeah and then they sp- start spraying people with seltzer water mm-hmm. and throwing food at them and they do like an awesome song called "Making Mischief." Mm-hmm. Um, By the end of which, everything appears to be ruined. Yes. Everything at the fancy party. Yes, they have ruined the fancy party, which I'm like kind of in favor of. Yeah. Like they just like throw canapes everywhere, and like for mm-hmm. some reason, there's like a thousand pies, and they yeah. all get thrown at everybody. Yeah. And then, do you remember what happens now? Um, do they, they just take over the, they like take over the boat, right? They take the, the steering wheel. The Countess asks the captain and everybody to come get the misfits. Mm. And then the misfits like roll up into the boat. Area. There's almost just like a gap where somehow the misfits get from the the party event space into the steering cabin. There's never a good idea in this show of where people are and how they get places. No. Um, they just roll up into the boat control area. Yeah. And then what happens? Then they... I don't know, actually. Are they st- are they intentionally piloting it, or are they just... <laughs> like, Pizzazz is like, eh, I can, I, can, I can pilot this boat. And Roxy's like, you're full of shit. And then she's like, fuck you. And she starts, like, messing with the dials. Right. And then it starts going really fast. And there are yacht skis. Yeah, it's like up on skis. I don't think that's how... <laughs> I don't think that's how a yacht works. No. And then it's about to run into a uh, a big container ship, I think. Yes, and Rio and Jem are, like, on the outside of the boat, so they appear to be in danger. Mm-hmm. And then that's the end of the episode. It says to be continued. Mm-hmm. Or continued or something. So. A cliffhanger. I think everything's always a cliffhanger. I think that is what, like, that is what, like, one of the things that, like, drove my, like, intense, mm. feverish desperation to, like, keep watching Gem episodes. But isn't it just resolved in, like, the first minute of the next episode? So that... Well, I was eight, yeah. so you gotta, like, cut me some slack. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just wonder, were you worried that the that the characters would not make it out of this one? Do you remember? <sighs> I think I was like worried. I think I was just like, what's going to happen? How is it going to be resolved? Because the- in the same way that I like, do you remember I, I had said that I was like this thing about Synergy being Jim's mom, mm-hmm. which I may or may not like actually be mem- remembering correctly. Although Wouldn't I- that be weird if it just <laughs> wasn't that? I think that I am. Okay. Um, but like it is something that like even then kind of bothered me. Yeah. But it didn't bother me in the way that it bothers me now. Yeah. It just bothered me in the way that I was like, well, I want to know more about that. Yeah. You know. Gotcha. Like, I want to know, like, more about Synergy and, like, how that happened. I just wanted, Mm. like, more plot stuff. Now I am like, there are implications. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so do you have anything else you wanted to point out about the episode? Um... Mm, nothing comes to mind. Okay. Did you? Um, no, I mean, we're still kind of in a, we're still doing some setup. I think the show is still doing a little bit of setup. We're not to the point where it's like, you know, definitely like Jim and the Misfits, like number one, number two. They don't have Starlight House yet, so they're still kind of doing that stuff. But it's not, it wasn't like... It wasn't as as wackadoo as the like last one, 
um, with the super like kooka pants set up. So mm. it felt a little bit more fillery to me. Mm. Even though the thing with the Bugs Bunny bomb and <laughs> the couch. That was delightful. <laughs> it was pretty special. And then Zipper is just like, I think he continues to like. I kind of like Zipper. Yeah. <laughs> Are you like pro Zipper? Kind of. I just <laughs> wanted to succeed at something. Oh, uh, we. Need I don't to... think he ever will though. No, I don't think he does. He's like he looks terribly inept. Um. Okay, so I think we're ready to to rate the the episode on outrageousness. From one to five. This one was not especially outrageous, except for the bomb. So yeah. I'm going to say two. I think I agree with that. I think on the scale of a... It, I mean, if this was your life, this would be, like, c- horrendous. Yeah. But, like, for a Jim and the Holograms episode, I think I would have to give it a two and a half. Yeah. Just for the, like, for the unicorns riding on the oh, rainbow. that's true. Which I felt like was, you know, like I said, like, basically, like, like mainlining some kind of, like, really addictive substance to a small girl. It is also just, like, really filled with incidents. Yes. It's very plotty. Yeah. It, I was actually surprised how they didn't, do more, like, explaining of the situation. Like, I don't know. Of, like, what the deal is with the computer. Nope, they're just, like, there's this computer thing, and you can do holograms, like, boom, let's go. Yeah. Holograms were, like, I feel like not well used in this episode. She uses... Hardly at all, really, except to change clothes. Well, that dumpster thing, dumpster thing, which totally doesn't work... Yeah, it failed. And then there's a part where she sends Stormer running off after, like, a fake gem. Oh, yeah. Which, like, there's going to be a lot of that. Right. Um, And she uses it to trick Rio at one point into... Yeah, there's going to be a lot of tricking Rio. (laughs) Like, it's basically like... Honestly, you probably could just say something to Rio. Or even just say, like, don't worry about it, Rio. And he'd just be like, uh... Uh, okay like it's the times this is like the thing where like I think it always is like sort of bothersome with the holograms because it's like Rio is like where is Jerrica is she okay Mm -hmm. and they're like (laughs) what a dope and they're like tee hee hee let's trick him when he's like concerned about her physical safety that's that is weird (laughs) it's true though I just, like, it is, you know what it is? What? It's misandry. <laughs> it's misandry? <laughs> uh, I actually, hashtag misandry. Yeah. Um, I, I, do, I do actually feel bad for Rio. Because he seems like a nice, but kind of dopey dude. I don't know why you wouldn't just tell, like, this is why I'm, like, I feel like Jerrica needs to re-examine her, like, relationship with Rio. Mm-hmm. Because if they had, like, a stronger relationship, she could, like, maybe tell him about this stuff. Yes. Um. And then she could still trick other people. Sure. She seems she seems to be into tricking people. <laughs> yep. That's, like, her jam. So, yeah. So tricking people is good i guess it's fine it's funny but the stuff that the misfits do is not because basically because it's like crass it seems like yeah it seems like that's the major criticism of their behavior i think that the criticism of the misfits is that they are tacky yeah that's like pretty much what's wrong with them (laughs) and then like tackiness also leads you to try to kill people sometimes Apparently. But it seems like the killing people is an extension of the tackiness, like, rather than anything else. It seems like the show would almost excuse the, like, attempted murders yeah. as long as they weren't so tacky yeah, about if it. Yeah, if they didn't, if they weren't wearing those clothes. 
And, like, sort of screeching. Yeah. You know? I think that's right. <laughs> All right, well, um... Anything? Is that the end? I think that might be the end. Do you have anything else? Misandry. You you got to watch out for the misandry. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag not all Rios. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to end it there. Yeah. Um, uh, this has been That Computer Is Your Mom. Jim and the Holograms, Season 1, Episode 2. Bye. Bye. Jim is my name.